This is a special update from Scrapple TV News. I'm your host, A.P. Ticker. Scrapple TV, the finest in unprocessed television. Will blow your fucking mind. Locally, from the department of who couldn't see this coming, last week, Melanie Haynes, 31, a mother of three and a latter-day national symbol of the gun rights movement for her insistence on openly carrying a loaded Glock handgun at her daughter's soccer games, despite the protests of police and parents, was shot dead in her kitchen by her husband, who then committed suicide. And they all lived happily ever after. Vandals rendered construction equipment at the proposed Sugar House Casino site inoperable last week by cutting hydraulic power lines. The casino is being built in phases, with the first phase scheduled to open next summer. The construction site has been the scene of protests by anti-casino groups and neighbors who are opposed to the project. Vandalism apparently happened sometime Thursday night or Friday morning, under cover of darkness. A sugar house rep says the casino is considering 24-hour security on the site. Hmm. It's a little like putting a metal detector in the Texas School Book Depository after the president has been shot. From the Department of You! That gives me deuce chills! A Lancaster man was arrested last week for propositioning his 13-year-old daughter on Facebook. Authorities say John Forehand, 39, went into Facebook using the name Bad Daddy to locate the girl proposed a meeting earlier this month, and described sex acts in graphic detail. Police say they found a camera, tripod, and an unopened box of condoms in Forehand's car. They also seized a digital camera, camcorder, computers, and data storage devices from his home. Forehand is charged with unlawful contact with a minor and criminal attempted incest. He's being held on $400,000 bail in the Lancaster County Prison, where he will likely learn what it feels like to be a 13-year-old girl at the mercy of a bad daddy. In sports, Michael Vick will be giving the public an inside look at his life during an eight-part television series scheduled to debut on BET next year. Tentatively titled The Michael Vick Project, the cable show will follow the Philadelphia Eagles quarterback as he tries to redeem himself after going to prison for 18 months for his role in operating a dogfighting ring. Previous reports that the show would be a Survivor-style reality show featuring cute little puppies are apparently untrue. From the department of Get a Load, dumbass, Matthew Mervine, 22, was arrested last week for stealing Philly's World Series rings out of an office at Citizens Bank Ballpark during a playoff game. Cops said it was easy to find Mervine, who was wearing a skull face Halloween mask, because just before swiping the rings, he'd filled out a job application, leaving behind his name, address, and phone number, along with a closed-circuit TV footage of himself swiping the rings. Now I know what you're thinking, and yes, he was from New Jersey. Over the weekend, White House Communications Director Anita Dunn said that Fox News operates as a communications arm of the Republican Party. Wow, you don't say. We understand that next week, the Obama administration is expected to announce that ice results from the freezing of water. The old Star Wars movies are much better than the new Star Wars movies, and if you hold a seashell up to your ear, you can hear the ocean. It is now day 66 since national security whistleblower Subel Edmonds publicly revealed the explosive details of bribery, espionage, blackmail, and the sale of nuclear secrets involving current and former high-ranking members of the U.S. government. It's a bizarre story that keeps on going and going because despite being fired seven years ago from her job as an FBI translator for trying to bring this story to light and Despite being gagged by the Justice Department since that time, Edmonds has this crazy notion that a citizen has a responsibility to speak out about high-level corruption when they find it.
she's named names, including the names of current and former high-ranking congresspersons and State Department officials who ought to be in jail for what the FBI says they've done. And now, 66 days after her sworn testimony, given under penalty of perjury, we still have not a silence, not a freaking word from the corporate press. Probably because nobody gave anyone a blowjob. Rush Limbaugh wants back in the NFL, it seems. After several news reports had the porcine scene pontificator as part of a group angling to purchase the NFL's St. Louis Rams, a number of NFL players came out and stated unequivocally that they would never play for a team owned by Limbaugh. Apparently, these NFL players got the idea somewhere that Limbaugh wasn't just a drug-addled hypocrite, but also a racist. Why? just because he said that the streets were safe after dark during the days of slavery? Or that the NFL all too often looks like a game between the Bloods and the Crips without any weapons? Or because he told a black caller on his radio program that she should take the bone out of her nose? Truth is, most NFL teams are owned by old, white, rich, fat fucks. So Limbaugh should fit right in. This has been a Scrapple TV News Update. I'm your host, A.P. Ticker. Good night, and get fucked.